recording, recording audio, recording video, and going live. We'll be starting soon, guys. Okie dokie. All right, Darcy, I'm sharing this on your page. We'll be starting soon. Seattle, where you at? And then to our uh, Zoom guests, I've muted your mics. So just to let you know when it's time to speak, to just unmute yourself. But. Hey, Barb, I see you on here. We'll be starting soon. I am, am I muted or unmuted now? Uh, I can hear you. You're now unmuted. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and mute yourself and. Okay. Hey, Amina, I'm glad you're here, girl. Hi, Barb. Welcome, you guys. We'll be starting here in just a moment. Go Hawks. Okay, sounds good, Barb. Okay, hello, 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 everybody. How is everybody doing today out there? Welcome to the Soul Manad Show with Sonia. I'm so glad that you guys are here today. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy 2021 to each and every one of you. Um, you know that I am expecting for great things in 2021, and I hope that you guys are too. 
We're going to take everything that we learned from 2020, and we are just going to continue to grow uh, from that and learn from that. And uh, great things are ahead for us. So I hope that you guys um, are are hopeful. I hope that you are expectant. Um, people have been writing in with um, their New Year's resolu- resolutions and their goals uh, for 2021. And, you know, people are talking about being more purposeful. People are talking about being more intentional. So I encourage you to be intentional, be be present, be purposeful, and, and remember to pause instead of just being reactionary and just really, really think about, you know, what you want uh, to accomplish by the words that you say. You remember what it says in Ecclesiastes, there is a time to speak, but there's a time to be silent. And we all need to know when it is time to bridle our tongues. So I am hoping that 2020 will be a year of just... Just so much grace in your life and um, peace for you and it, peace in your mind and and peace in your soul and and peace worldwide. Um, you know, it's just 2020 was a year of, of so much pain that like what Rhonda and I were talking about last week, but um, but there was a lot of good and there was a lot of beauty that came out of that. There was um, uh, a, a lot of uh, beautiful uh, actions by uh, our fellow humans and uh, humanity was still alive and well. It wasn't all lost and there's so much that we can learn from and, and glean from that in 2020. So um, I hope that you will be looking forward to 2021 like we are here here at Solmonade. So you know that that's a Solmonade way. You were always optimistic and uh, we are here to encourage, uplift, and edify uh, you guys and come alongside you shoulder to shoulder and side by side, locking hearts with you for a better year. So God bless you guys uh, in 2021. I'm glad that you guys are here. Again, this is our 10th anniversary. Uh, We're 10 and a half years in now, actually from July of 2010. So we're excited to be here. We're we're in a, a um, relatively newer uh, studio for Solmonade down here, uh, downtown in Minneapolis. But the show is global. Solmonade stands for soul, mind, and body, where we believe in the importance of inhaling love and exhaling uh, um, uh, compassion. So um, I thank you guys for being here. And just remember that together we can um, and together we will. So uh, it's all about finding health and balance in the soul, mind, and body. So we're glad that you're here. Go Hawks! by the way. <laughs> I know I got my Seattle sister on with us. I'll introduce you in just a moment. So I'm proud of my Hawks uh, and, and all that you guys are doing. I'm flying out to Seattle, by the way, on Friday. I'm just waiting for my um, my next COVID test to come in. And uh, I don't have to do that, but I just feel like it's the responsible thing to do before I hop on an airplane. And uh, so I'm going to uh, wait for those results to come back. Hopping on an airplane on Friday, going out to Seattle because I am honored and privileged and thrilled to be officiating a wedding. So shout out to uh, to Daniel and Adrian. God bless you guys. And I look forward to um, hooking y'all up on Saturday. So uh, Marlena, congratulations to you and, and uh, your husband um, on the the upcoming wedding there of your son, Daniel. So Seattle, I will see you out there. Um, where are y'all out, Seattle? Uh, let's see who's on here. I see Keisha's watching. Hey, Leanna, how are you? You guys share this with your friends. If you look in the lower uh, left-hand button there, it's, there's a share button and you can click share and you can share it on your own page and, and invite your friends uh, to share here and uh, participate. Be a part of the show today. Um, we've had different people asking questions about my officiating weddings. Uh, yes, I have been a licensed ordained minister for, uh, what's it, 15 years now? And I am available to officiate weddings, and I do baptisms, and I do funerals. So uh, if you're interested, go ahead and just reach out to us there at solmonade.com, and somebody will get back to you. Uh, I am registered in a variety of states, and if it's a state where I haven't officiated yet, I can certainly register if that is the requirement of that state. Um, folks have asked about sponsorship. Reach out to us there at solmonade.com. Somebody will get back to you about these sponsorship opportunities. And if you would like to be a guest on the show and you would like your company, your project, uh, your passion, your charity, your organization to be highlighted and you want to be a guest on the show or send out a representative to be on the show, whether in person or on Zoom, uh, reach out to us there uh, at the website and somebody will follow up and get back with you guys. Just a couple more announcements, and then we will get into our guests here. 
Let's see. Restaurants. You guys know that I have been highlighting uh, different restaurants each week. Remember, Rhonda and I were talking about that um, a little bit more last week, but the importance in this COVID climate of supporting our local businesses. And um, that does include, you know, restaurants. So what I've decided to do is, um, hey, Richard, I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us. So what I've been doing is I've been highlighting uh, a couple restaurants at every single show. So, um, you know, and you can you can tweak your family's budget. It, it's going to be, you know, fewer groceries that you'll be buying if you can just support a local restaurant. Uh, for a meal or two a week and encourage your friends to do that. So remember I talked about uh, Dino's there in the Seattle area. Uh, I talked about the Chelan Cafe under the uh, the West Seattle Bridge there in Seattle. Uh, I've talked about the Urban Grill in Urbandale, Iowa, which is a suburb of Des Moines. And today I want to uh, highlight the Wildfin Restaurant in Renton. It's right there at the landing. Keisha, you remember that area well. Um, girl, it's a lot more built up though than back in the day, <laughs> but, uh, the Wildfin restaurant there in Renton, I've been there several times. The The food is excellent. The service is on point. Uh, let's reach out and support them. And also, we have one of Keisha's favorites. It's It's So Vegan, uh, which is I-T-S-O, vegan, in Prairie, Texas. So um, Prairie. So that's like a suburb of Dallas, isn't it, I believe? So uh, support those. Hey, Amir, how's it going? I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, support those restaurants. There you go. We have outdoor dining, too. I'm not quite sure what uh, the laws, policies, rules are right now, um, you know, from state to state. But uh, if you can dine outdoors, um, dine outdoors. Oh, my gosh, that reminds me. <laughs> Cindy Peltier, are you on? Are you watching, girl? She texted me the other day, and she says, Hey, Sone, I just caught the tail end of this. Joni, you'll appreciate it. She says, I, I saw in the news that there are... Um, Okay, I'm not sure, Joni, and I don't even know how this is legit or how this is legal, but <laughs> she showed on the news in Seattle that there were these little ice houses or these boxes. I don't look like a container or something that was on the ice, and you can rent it and go in and sit with up to five people, and they will serve you your meal on like a frozen lake or something. I'm like, no, no, no. She's like, so, and that looks so cool. Are you going to do that? No, y'all know I am not a Tundra girl, and I'm not about to walk out on a frozen body of water. I am sorry. I know these people do it all the time, but that is just not my jam. Keisha, I know that you're with me. Joni, when, when we open your mic, I'm going to ask you if you've ever done that being a Minnesotan, but that is crazy. Um, Anyway, so yeah, pretty funny. Uh, Cindy Peltier, you're just cracking me up, girl. Okay, you guys, we have a great show for you today. And I was going to go in a different direction, but I have to tell you, um, I have a, um, a childhood friend of mine, um, Keisha, will be joining us. And I was looking at her, um, her post on COVID because she has recently contracted COVID. And so I wanted to check back with her and see how she was doing. And, and so I, I went and I I was looking at that and let me tell you she just shared so much valuable information i believe that this could be life-saving uh, i hope that you guys will share this uh, this show today as, as I interview Keisha and bring in uh, Joni, um, who's been a nurse for 41 years, uh, share these ideas because I believe that this could be a life-altering and life-saving show for many people. So y'all know what I'm talking about here in just a moment. So Gabe, why don't we go ahead and why don't we bring Keisha on? Um, Keisha, hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Keisha Braggs is joining us. Uh, you can go ahead and unmute your mic. Keisha Braggs is joining us from uh, the Dallas area. Uh, is your mic? There you go. Good. You're all set. Yeah. yeah, from the Dallas area. And Keisha and I go way back. Way back. Way. Yeah. Taking it way <laughs> back. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Girl, do you remember when we were just little kids? I mean, 14, 15. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, we we were we were teens for sure. And they, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But we had a great time, though. We did have a great time. <laughs> yes, we did. You know, that I, what picture I came across the other day is when we all went to uh, mm-hmm. senior prom together. Mm-hmm. Um, who was your date? Did you go with Tyrone? Girl, yes, I went with Tyrone. <laughs> Uh-huh. And, yes, I did. And I went with Junebug, and Rita went with Marcus, and Tanya went with Renard, right? Because we were mm-hmm. all, yes. Oh my God. Yes. Oh. Yes. Had a blast. Yes. Had a blast. I didn't even want to go home. <laughs> I know. But my mom threatened his life. That he had to have me home. <laughs> that that's a good mama right there. <laughs> yeah, she was. She's a good mom. Hi, mom. Uh, and hi to my mom. Hi to Keisha's mom. <laughs> yes, we love our moms, don't we? So grateful that that they're still with us. So um, I have Keisha on here, and Keisha has uh, uh, recently come down with COVID. Um, before I get into that, why don't we go ahead and uh, let me introduce Joni to you as well. Joan Perner is a friend of mine. I met Joan about three and a half years ago when we moved here to the Twin Cities, and she golfs at the same club that that I, uh, my husband and I had joined. And so um, you can unmute your mic if you want, Joni. And... Um, um, Joni's been a nurse for 41 years. So when I saw Keisha's post with all of this life-saving, life-altering information, I reached out to Joni and I asked if Joni um, can can come on board with us. Um, and after I shared everything with Joni, she's like, "Oh my gosh, you you're right. I mean, this all of these components are never brought together." And you know, Joni, when um, I be- went to bed last night after we talked, and I thought it- it's almost like it's it, there's five pieces to the puzzle, but nobody's ever put mm-hmm. the puzzle together. Yeah. I know. I think they give you general directions, which mm-hmm. are all wise. Mm-hmm. But if you took each title of those directions, I yep. think we could break it down yeah. into individual steps. Mm-hmm. And we could make it a lot more user friendly for mm-hmm. the person that's dealing with COVID. Yeah, exactly. So Keisha, let's go back to that then. So, uh, you're there in the Dallas area, and and y'all want to bring in the new year, but due to COVID and the crowds and people are crazy, you and your girls were like, no, we're not going to do anything on the 31st. We are just going to get together and play cards on the 30th. So you get together mm-hmm. with your girls on December 30th. You're sitting at a card table. You're wearing your masks. It's mm-hmm. it's just you girls. Mm-hmm. Um but one of your girls did have what she thought was the common cold, correct? Yes. She thought she had the cold, a mm-hmm. cold. She had um, gone to a concert, we found out later, a week before and caught a cold. And um, um, she said it was just a, you know, just a regular common cold. And it went away, came and went. So no big deal. And but then um, within but these- a, a day or two, then, then what happened? Um, well, we didn't, we didn't, we're just now putting all this together. So mm-hmm. when we were at the card table, we, I didn't know no, all that. Not at the time. Correct. No, no. And so, um, we just continued playing cards and the next day, um, I had a, um, scratchy throat mm-hmm. and then, um, I couldn't like it was sand in there and I couldn't get it out Mm -hmm. and so I was like you know constantly clearing my throat Mm -hmm. and I was like okay this is weird and then I was like I I probably need just a cough drop or something um and then about midnight while I was at work I I worked a night shift um I actually um started getting chills really bad and and I was asking my coworkers, you know is it cold to you and they were like no we're fine and I'm like are you sure? Because it feels like I'm in a box fridge freezer or something. Right. And I mean, I was Ooh. at my desk shaking like this. And I was Mm-mm. like, what Ooh. in the world is going on? Mm-mm. So um, I went home and I said, well, let me get home. And I might be run- starting to run a temperature or something. Let me start that Tylenol and right. Motrin and, and see if I can, you know, take take care of it at home. Mm-hmm. And I said, if I don't have any relief in, you know, by morning, I'm just going to go to emergency. Mm-hmm. And, um, I called my girlfriend, um, Dr. Thomas mm-hmm. and I was letting her know what was going on. And I think I slept maybe two, two to three hours. 
And I was up and I called her and I said, look, I don't feel good. What do you think? And she was like, no, go to urgent care right now. Yeah. Just go, just get up and go right now to urgent care. So what and, happened um, when you went to urgent care? Well, um, I had to call, um, I had to call in for an online appointment. So I had to wait at home okay. until it was my turn. And okay. then I went in and, um, the doctor did a saliva test, sure. um, mm -hmm. and took my temperature and all that and said, well, you don't have the flu, but you have flu like symptoms, which, um, okay. I'm glad we're taking the COVID test because that's what it sounds like it is. Mm -hmm. And so he said, in the meantime, I'm going to give you Tamiflu to handle the flu symptoms. Okay. Um, and you just need to drink lots of fluids and stay hydrated. And so he said, which pharmacy do you want to pick up your script? And I was like, well, um, you know, the one near my home, right. you know, and so he called it in and I was on my way to go pick up my script. Okay. And then when I got there to the pharmacy to pick up my script, it wasn't ready. So I had to go home and I'm sick now. Right. And they're telling me to go all these different places. Wow. And I'm, and I'm sick. So um, I went home and I waited like for an hour or so and then I had to go back to the pharmacy and go get it and then come home and start to medicate myself but while I was there um, Dr. Thomas was telling me to grab different vitamins and different things she gave me a list of things to grab while I was at the pharmacy and, okay um, um, hang on hang on Keisha just a second now so so were you given any other counsel and advice from the, the staff at urgent care or from the pharmacist Sonia, everything I just told you is exactly what they told me. And that was it. Nothing more. And I remember wow. back in the day, your doctor would sit there and say, yes. now, when you get home, make sure you rest or you, you know, you take eight ounces of water or, you know, make sure you're, you're getting a lot of zinc or whatever. Right. Back in the day, they would do that. And even at your pharmacy, you would go to your pharmacy and your pharmacy would break down your yeah. med and say, you know what, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to take this med, but watch out for this. And when you get home, right. make sure you stay under the covers and you're not outside. You know, they advise you and, right. you know, the it's, it's, it's a little like more a detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a consult and right. nobody did any of that. So wow. I, I had and thank God I had my friend who's a doctor and right. I was talking to her and she's like, I'm just going to send you this list because she's into um, and I hope you do a show with her, actually. But she's got <laughs> I she will. does um, um, holistic um, medicine mm -hmm. like she her her big thing is you know, she'll give you the prescription, she'll give you the antibiotic, but she's also going to tell you the natural over-the-counter things that you can use to also medicate and work side by side with your script. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I was talking to her. And so while I'm going through all this, thank God I had her, you know, texting me all the stuff to get. So I took all my bundle of stuff home and I just, I was like, maybe I should have bought a cabinet or something because I just bought a bunch of stuff but um yeah you have I your personal started, pharmacy <laughs> exactly but I was I was like no I need to um you know these are for symptoms it's not for me to just gobble down and take all at once right. these are to right. handle the symptoms as I go through the different phases of mm -hmm. whatever this COVID is about to do to me mm -hmm. right right, right. So um, that's kind of how I lined up everything. And I just put everything on my nightstand and I just lined it up. And that's the picture that you see, Sonia, mm -hmm. um, when you see all of my, my items that yes. I, um, Dr. Thomas had me pick up. And so I just started saying, okay, I need to understand what each one of these things are for. And the description that Dr. Thomas gave me does that. And so I know when I have a certain symptom, I know which medicine to pick um to pick up or which item to pick up and start using mm -hmm. and and so i started i started kind of chronicling um what i was doing on facebook you know right. like and, it, and i was like okay you know i got the chills i don't know so you saw the one where i was saying i have you know i think this is it right <laughs> like, here, yeah the big one i think i got the vid <laughs> yeah 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 i remember that i mean so, so I was like, well, let's, instead of me being, you know, afraid or um, upset or panicky, let's turn this into, let's see what I can do to, um, to make myself better. Like, you, let's see what I can do. Yourself. Let's see, 
I mean, you, yeah. you, you know, you're a strong woman, you know, and, and you know that you're going to be your own advocate. You're going to do your research, but you literally, mm-hmm. here you are sent home with COVID and, and really sent home to die. Take your Tylenol, sleep and, and take your, you know, to take your prescription and that's it. And it just mm-hmm. seems like we have so many people that are dying unnecessarily. I want to share um, with our viewers what what you wrote here. So you said, um, I'm feeling so much better, but here's some information. So it says here, um, no one ever talks about how to fight COVID at home. Uh, and this is uh, somebody else is saying, but you posted this. I came down with COVID in November. I went to the hospital running a fever of 103, a rapid heartbeat, and other common symptoms that come with COVID. While I was there, they treated me for the high fever, dehydration, and pneumonia. The doctor sent me home to fight COVID with two prescriptions, azithromycin, 250 milligrams, and dexamethasone, 6 milligrams, excuse me. When the nurse came in to discharge me, I asked her, what can I do to help fight this at home? And this nurse had shared with this other person, and this is consistent with the message that your doctor had been sharing with you. And so this is the imperative, very key, important advice that Keisha has taken herself, and she'll continue as she shares her story, but it says, sleep on your stomach at all times with COVID. If you can't sleep on your stomach because of health issues, sleep on your side. Do not lay on your back no matter what because it smashes your lungs and that will allow fluid to set in. Set your clock every two hours while sleeping on your stomach, then get out of bed and walk for 15 to 30 minutes, no matter how tired or weak that you are. Also, move your arms around frequently. It helps to open your lungs. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. This will help build up your lungs, plus help get rid of the pneumonia and other fluid you may have. When sitting in a recliner, see, you know how many people are probably going home, kick them back in the recliner, I mean back way back, right? When Mm -hmm. sitting in a recliner, sit up straight. Do not lay back in the recliner. Again, this will smash your lungs. While watching TV, get up and walk during every commercial. Eat at least one to two eggs a day, plus bananas, avocado, and asparagus. These are good for uh, potassium. Drink Pedialyte, Gatorade Zero, Powerade Zero, and water with electrolytes to prevent you from becoming dehydrated. Do not drink anything cold. Have it at a room temperature or warm it up. Water with lemon and a little honey, peppermint tea, apple cider are good suggestions for getting in fluids. And I've seen all those pictures you've had, Keisha. No mm-hmm. milk products mm-hmm. or pork. Vitamins D3, C, B, zinc, probiotic. Um, one day are uh, one a day are good ideas. And Tylenol for fever. Mucinex or Mucinex DM for drainage. Plus, it helps the cough. Pepsid helps for cramps in your legs. And Keisha, don't let me forget, you mentioned that to me yesterday. One baby aspirin every day can help prevent getting a blood clot, which can occur from low activity. Drink a smoothie of blueberries, strawberries, bananas, honey, tea, and a spoon uh, a, two, uh, a spoon or two of peanut butter. Uh, we always hear of how COVID takes lives, but there isn't a lot of information out there regarding how to fight it at home. Uh, and then you just said, I hope that this helps, uh, someone and you know, that you said, I I know that it helped me. So, um, so Keisha, tell us then, uh, about how you were able to apply all of these things at home, you know, based on what we were talking about yesterday and that post that you just, uh, that I had read, uh, that you had put there on your page for the Mm -hmm. cramping, the headaches and Mm -hmm. keeping the lungs moving. Yeah, I had, um, well, I did the, um, I, I kind of put everything in order where I have my vitamins rolled out first. Okay. Cause that's the first thing I like to do in the beginning of my day sure. is get all my vitamins because right. I need all my strength. Right. And um, I mean, you need your strength just to go from one room to another, you know? Um, and, you know, especially if your house is big enough, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's, this is taking all your, it's targeting your lungs and it's taking all your energy. That's the and first thing. Yesterday you had told me that, that you felt like you had just run a marathon and yeah. you know, our muscles fatigue after, you know, an intense workout or an intense mm-hmm. game or match or something. Right. Mm-hmm. Yet of course mm-hmm. you hadn't barely even walked across the room. 
No, no. And it and it's like um, it's like you your body's been hit. And I think that comes from the chills you know, your muscles contracting because you have the chills Mm -hmm. for so long. I mean, I had the chills for over 24 hours. Mm. I was shaking Mm. like I was shivering. Mm. And so then you have the body, the roll, the body aches start to roll in Mm -hmm. and then the headaches start to roll in. So Mm -hmm. all that stuff is going on and it's hitting your body and your body is fighting. Like, you know, it's, it's, all of my engines were running. I could tell that something had attacked my body. Mm-hmm. All my engines were on fire right. trying to fight it. I could sure. feel it inside of me. Mm-hmm. And so when I got up, you know, when I got everything together, my um, my little personal pharmacy together, and I would go to the kitchen to try to make um, the scrambled eggs or whatever they're telling you to eat. Right. Um, that's I, I, I walked from the room where I'm uh, quarantined to the kitchen and I had to stop at the kitchen sink for a second mm. because I was taught ty- like I was taught ty- like I, <laughs> I was tired. Exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Completely exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to turn around and scramble the eggs for myself mm-hmm. and then turn around and walk back to the quarantine room with my little scrambled egg. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I got back to my bed, I fell into my yes. bed and those eggs sat there. But, you know, it's just, it takes a lot out of you. Mm-hmm. So if you can see in the picture, I kind of have my vitamins up front because yep. those are the things that I take kind of first. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the day is about tackling the symptoms because I don't want anything to get out of whack where it's getting ignored mm-hmm. and it causes a domino effect with the rest of my body or my organ. Right. So um, I start, I would lay everything out. My vitamins would happen first and then I'd start looking at, okay, do I have a headache? And that means sitting there and really paying attention to your body signs. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. So I, I got, I had to get to a quiet place. Like, Sit, sit up on the edge of my bed and close my eyes and assess how does my body feel right now? Yes. How does my head feel? How does my arms feel? Yes. What's my heart rate like? What's my breathing like? Does it feel like it's pressure when I breathe? Um, when I stretch out my legs, th- does it hurt? Does it feel tight? Mm-hmm. Um, my arms, I would raise my arms and see if they felt sore and bring them back down all the way to see if that felt sore. And, right. and out of all of that, I would be able to know which thing I needed to take next. Mm-hmm. A you self-assessment, know, a self-evaluation. And I love how you, you were so per- purposeful and intentional in doing that because uh, personally, I've known maybe 120 or so people that, that have had COVID um, personally. And um, I've talked to many people uh, about this all around the world. And I just keep hearing so many people talking about going home and um, taking their fluids, taking their, um, their prescription and their Tylenol, but going to bed and getting as much sleep as possible. Uh, 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 no, uh. I slept, my average sleep time with this is about four hours. Mm-hmm. I get about mm. four hours of sleep and then I'm up and down every hour. I'm up and down Moving. for one, for one, because you have so many things, your body is fighting. It's interrupting your sleep. Yes. It's, it won't let you sleep mm-hmm. because you've it's got, not real sleep. it's no. not real sleep. Like my no. stomach um, stayed upset. My stomach stayed upset for a while. So I had to constantly like that probiotic. I had to make sure I got that down Yes, in the beginning of the day because I stayed, you know, I stayed sick to my stomach the right. rest of the day. So I was like, you know, there's things you just have to pay attention to. Yes. Everything you have to pay attention to and you just have to treat it as it comes up. Yes. And Joni, like we were talking about last night, you've been a nurse for 41 years. And, you know, you can bring the, the, the medical component to everything that Keisha has been talking about as her own right. advocate, her own nurse, her, uh, I mean, just right. re- really to, to save her life. And, and again, I do believe that these, these tips could save other lives because I think so many people are going home and crawling in bed. Can, can you go ahead and respond yeah. to some of those tips that Keisha was talking about? Yeah, I thought what we should do is... Um go down each one of those tips and Mm -hmm. kind of medically discuss that as to why that makes sense and why that is something Mm -hmm. you need the details of those instructions. 
those instructions are general and wise for every time you get sick. Mm -hmm. Every time you get sick, no matter what it is, you need to stay hydrated. You need to keep an eye on electrolytes. You Mm -hmm. need to get rest. You usually need to take a prescription or ibuprofen or Tylenol or rotate. But this one is a little different because Mm -hmm. we need to give people more detail. This is COVID. COVID is a different animal. We're still learning a lot about COVID and it's changing as we've uh, noted in the last couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So I think that we're, I think that we are going to have coronavirus in some fashion around here for a long time. And Mm -hmm. it's just going to be that we adapt to whatever the strain is. So let's look at what the strain that we have right now, Mm COVID-19 and what some of the things that we've learned about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, Keisha, you're absolutely right. You have to stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. They, they're going to send you home from every urgent care with the idea of staying um, hydrated and rest. Because, of course, your body just got a huge viral load. Your body is stressed. And it is stressed in every organ in every way. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that happens is you are with COVID is you are not oxygenating well enough. And um, unless you had an That's oximeter right. on, you won't really know what your number is, but you can feel mm-hmm. when you're not oxygenating well and you get shorter breath and that creates kind of an anxiety. How scary. Which then it's scary. Mm-hmm. You get more and more scared and then you can get into a panic attack and it can really snowball. But I think if people understood what happens to them, it would be less scary. Mm-hmm. So let's just take the first... Um, point that Keisha talked about with hydration. Um, Hydration is not only just drink some water every now and then. Right. Really, I think what would be good for people is if we literally set them up on a schedule. Yes. And we did it every two hour schedule, Mm -hmm. which would include, um, I I just made kind of a a rough idea of what that would be like. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah. So it would be like uh, times across the top. You're going to set your alarm on your phone. Everybody's got a phone. Yep. And and then um, what medical activity you need to do to help yourself just down the other axis. Mm Yeah. And I think that would be helpful to people Mm -hmm. and they would do that 24 hours a day. So um, just in terms of hydration, um, every two hours, you're going to need to drink um, as much really as you po- as you can tolerate. Sometimes when you're really sick, you're not going to tolerate a lot of volume. So just go with two, three ounces, see if that stays down. If that does, then you can t- tackle another ounce. But don't just sleep through it and skip it. Right. Literally have to set your alarm, wake up, have that stuff close so that you're not spending energy getting out to the kitchen And set up your table like Keisha did so that it's right there because Mm -hmm. you are going to be exhausted. Mm -hmm. Uh, You probably all know a lot about uh, different electrolyte drinks you can get, which are like the Gatorades and the Powerades. But um, if you choose the zero, at least you're not getting a lot of sugar. But don't forget you need some sugar. Yeah, Sugar is energy. So -hmm. we're not going to go totally Mm -hmm. sugar-free. It won't hurt you to have some sugar in your, in your, your electrolyte. Uh, solutions. There is uh, a product called Ultima that is in a powder. You can add to your water if you just want to have a case of water bottles next to your bed and mm-hmm. you can add your electrolytes to that. Joni, can you spell flavors. that for me, please? I'm, I'm typing it in here for our viewers. U-L-T-I-M-A. U-L-T-I-M-A, Ultima. Ultima. Okay. comes in several flavors. Okay. Um, you can get it on Amazon. Okay. You can get it at quite a few places. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Yep. But that one is um, known to be high quality. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really, it's a matter of you setting up this time period for your best care is by working at it. You can't just go home and rest. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. You can't just lay there and sleep. You have to be active in your care. Be deliberate and intentional. Very deliberate. Mm-hmm. And if, of course, you have a, a schedule and your alarm goes off, you might even know, what, what in the world is this going off for? Well, you're going to look at this and see what's next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Look at so look at that chart. Every one of these every one of these boxes you should be that's an every two hour schedule. Every one of those boxes you should get up out of bed and do your walking. And if you can only walk ten minutes, it's worth ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Is that the I know they say of the up to thirty too, minutes for the lungs? When, when well, you walk? in addition to that, you, mm-hmm. in addition to that, you I think that you should purposely do those um, arm lifts because when you take your arms up over your shoulders, you mm-hmm. feel your rib cage lift up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When your rib cage lifts up, your diaphragm can move down more so that you can get a b- deeper breath. Mm-hmm. That moves that air and tries to move the um, fluids in your lungs. You're going to have fluids that come automatically because that is the result of an infectious process. Mm. Fluids come to your body for a reason. Unfortunately, in COVID, we get too much. Mm-hmm. And so it would be best if you um, put the arm movements on a schedule okay. where you're literally taking really deep breaths into your nose and blow them out through your mouth. Even if they're going to be short breaths, it's better than none. Take the short breaths as deep as you can, hold it a bit and blow it out. You, you're creating that pressure inside your lungs, which is trying to open up those passages the deeper down those passages can open, the more you're going to be able to oxygenate. If you have them, if those little areas, which look like, uh, almost look like broccoli, if those little areas can't get the oxygen down through the stem and into the um, little tiny parts of the flower, which is what, you know, kind of looks like on the broccoli, mm-hmm. then it's, you're not getting oxygenated as well. So if you can get deep breaths, hold it down there, create that pressure, push the air through there a bit. Maybe you're going to feel a little better every couple hours because you need to keep oxygenating as best you can. So that's where they talk about lifting your arms up, but go up over your shoulders so that your shoulder blades come up and your, it lifts your rib cage up. Okay. You get a deeper breath and your diaphragm is able to move down. Okay. That's the inhale. Then I think that with the the vitamins and the Tylenol, ibuprofen. What you got, Keisha, was a Z pack. So that's uh, zithromycin, which was, uh, uh, it sounds like you got uh, an antibiotic. That's an antibiotic. And then you got the dexamethasone, and that's a steroid. Mm. So those have to be taken on schedule. Mm-hmm. They can't be taken whenever you feel like it, whenever you wake up. Mm-hmm. So those medications need to go on your schedule. And write them in the box that, that you need to go to. And when your alarm goes off and it's 2 p.m., you look down your list of boxes and you see what you're supposed to be doing right now. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be walking. You're going to put your arms up in deep inhale. You're going to take some ounces of your electrolytes. And that's the time you're going to take your antibiotic. Or that's the time you're going to take your Tylenol, whatever is, whatever is mapped out on your schedule. And there's also prescriptions. So your prescription, like... Uh, for your steroid and your antibiotic, you have to set your schedule in order to keep the blood level steady Mm -hmm. of that medication in your system to work its best for you. Mm -hmm. You have to take it on a schedule. Okay. (laughs) And Joni, um, you know, I love this idea when we were talking last night. Um, It's like there's so many different components but nobody's ever really brought them together. And when we were talking about uh, the schedule and like how Keisha took care of herself and was so intentional and so deliberate and being disciplined, I likened it to uh, 23 years ago when I had pneumonia so bad, double pneumonia. I was at home. I thought I was going to die. I was hallucinating. Um, I just laid there in bed. I, I, it was, it was a very frightening time and I couldn't breathe. And so when we were talking about this last night, I thought, you know, when your alarm goes off, like you had just said, you may not even think for a moment or recognize where you're at, what day it is, what's going on. But if you know to look to that table, look at your notes, keep notes. And like you said, look at your chart. What is next? Have a little post-it just to remind you, you know, I mean, sometimes I didn't even have COVID, but I, I didn't even know if it was, if it was morning or if it was night, you know, you know, that's, it's really good advice for any illness. 
Sure. But mm-hmm. I think with COVID, we have to take it more seriously mm-hmm. because COVID starts out where you're not feeling so horrible yet, but it gets worse as it goes through. So when Keisha was able to still question herself of, gosh, should I be going to the doctor or not? Right. And it was getting worse. Should I go to the urgent care or not? Yes, you should. When the pandemic, you need to figure this out. Yes. And mm-hmm. um, I think that with COVID, you should make this table right away when you feel like you're getting sick mm-hmm. and you should fill it in yeah. for 24 hours. And then you're going to do the same thing every single yeah. day for right. 24 hours. Right. So it, you only have to make one table, mm-hmm. but you need to fill in what time do those prescriptions need to be taken? What time do those uh, steroids, if you have that, you might get an inhaler, you might get a nebulizer for uh, better intake mm-hmm. of oxygen into your lungs. You might actually go home with real with oxygen. Right. Um, some, some people are um, buying a oximeter, mm-hmm. which is just uh, a little uh, machine that can read the oxygen levels in your system. Sure. And that's helpful when you call the doctor, if they happen to ask, what is your, you can tell them I have an oximeter and I'm, I'm Mm -hmm. um, saturating at this certain level. And uh, you should call when you do call, you should give them as much information as possible. Not, I just don't feel good. Yeah. So you should talk about anybody that you were around with a cold because right now we can't really assume that people just have a cold. No, this, this COVID is too crazy. Right. So, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, I wanted to also mention that um, I've, I've met several people that have contracted COVID that don't have cold sy- symptoms. What are their so symptoms? They, they, they never thought that in a million years it could have been COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, one lady had a horrible backache. And a backache. that wow. was her. Uh, yeah, she ha- that was her only symptom to begin with. She had a backache. Then it started with the headache. Headache is a common one with COVID. Mm -hmm. So with the backache, she thought, well, um, maybe she, you know, hurt her back somehow. But then when the headache came on, that she thought was maybe because she wasn't sleeping well because her back hurt. And so she went on like that for about a week before it slammed her. Wow. And then it was obvious that it was COVID. So she had been with all of her friends and unknowingly brought this COVID when it was um, a pretty big viral load on her body to all of her friends Uh, and she didn't know. So we just have to be so careful mm -hmm. and there isn't really any uh, masks are not a hundred percent anything. What masks do is um, they do your own personal part to keep your secretions off of other people. Right. It doesn't, yep. it doesn't really prevent that you're not going to touch it anywhere and give it to yourself because it's on surfaces. Yeah, But sure. we, it's just what we can do. Mm-hmm. We, we, were, we don't have much control over this virus. And so I think if there's something that we can add to the greater population <laughs> to help, the mask is a pretty small thing to, to ask for. Yeah, I think so too. You know, if it, it, it's not, it's not a... a a huge difference, but you know, if we all t- collectively would would come together and just do our part, you know, just just mask up, you know, just mask it's up. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, they're a pain in the butt sometimes, and yeah. they get hot. But it's uh, I don't really want your globules on me. Yeah. So I'm appreciating that you do wear your mask yeah. and you keep it on your nose, so I don't get anything from your nose on me. Right. Now that's really only protecting you from the larger molecules, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not going to protect anything from an aerosolized size of a molecule, sure. which is how we get COVID. Right. So, yeah, we're still going to have COVID even if we mask. Yeah. And yeah. we do. Mm-hmm. But we can do, we get to, we get to help a little bit yeah. by wearing a mask. We get to help. Joni, can you, um, can you speak at this, this point that Keisha was making in, in what she learned uh, about the importance of not going home and laying on your back? Don't lay on your back in that recliner and just think that you're just going to yes. sleep away your sickness. What happens to the lungs when you have COVID? Yes, that's, that's a good point. We need to bring that up because um, if you're laying on your back and so your lungs are now dependent on 
your muscles, your respiratory muscles to pull your diaphragm down to get air in mm -hmm. and you're sleeping on your back, yeah. um, your respiratory muscles are more dependent and there's more weight on your lungs, especially if they're filling with fluid. Mm -hmm. So that fluid is going to pocket and kind of pull down in its lowest areas due to gravity. And that is where you're going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. If you can um, remember with COVID, you need to sleep on your stomach or prone position. If you can remember on TV, a lot of times you saw that the healthcare teams were turning patients onto their stomachs. Yes. Even when they were on a ventilator, which yes. is a pretty tricky thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that was really important because the, the lungs can open up much larger in all of the lobes. Mm. And that way you have more opportunity, more surface area to be oxygenated. Mm -hmm. And you need every particle of oxygen that you can get during COVID. Mm. And Keisha, yesterday, uh, when you and I were talking, um, you had mentioned that, you know, in, in being in that position, if you are in your back, like your doctor had shared with you, that, that your lungs can, can collapse and that, that mucousy buildup is just so thick and gooey and it will, it can, um, well, Joni, you want to explain what I'm trying to explain in non-medical terms? <laughs> well, if you're, if, when you have a, uh, infectious process going on in your body, the way that the cells bring um, healing to you produces fluid. So when those cells break down, trying to get rid of the oxygen or the, the virus or the bacteria, mm -hmm. when the, the byproduct is some fluid, so that fluid's going to collect. If you're just laying on your back, and you're getting all the sleep you, you can possibly get, like mm. they recommend, you're just laying there for hours on your back while that um, secretion pools into the tiniest spots of your uh, lungs, which are the alveoli. So you've got, the, you've got your trachea going down, and then it branches off into each lung, and that's a pretty big pipe, which is the bronchi. And as you get down uh, closer to where oxygenation is happening, that it looks like the flowers on the broccoli. It just like branches out. Mm -hmm. All those little pockets are going to be full of fluid. Sometimes that fluid, especially when you're dehydrated, that fluid can get about as thick as peanut butter. Oh, and you word. cannot break that up. You cannot mm -hmm. cough that up. And mm -hmm. it makes you so sick. How scary. So when it is thick like that, the reason they're saying no milk products is because milk thickens phlegm. Mm -hmm. It makes the phlegm harder to bring up, yeah. and therefore it's going to sit in there and pool. Ugh. And as you swallow just regular saliva, it's going to go deeper and deeper down into the respiratory tract. So you want to stay away from milk products when you have a, a cold like that, mm. and especially during COVID, because it gets thicker. And sometimes the fluid that pockets down in there can become so thick that it can't move and then you're you you just are not able to have enough surface area to exchange oxygen and that's why you get worse so the other thing that COVID is doing is creating blood clots in people's lungs yes. and people's hearts mm -hmm. and it's happening um kind of at the end of COVID or even uh, a week or two later they're coming back with it but my um yeah my brother just ended up in the hospital with uh, two stents needing to be put into his um, arteries. And the cardiac nurse was telling him how many COVID patients they have on the cardiac floor because they develop blood clots. Wow. So um, when Keisha was talking about taking that baby aspirin every day, mm -hmm. I, during, I think that is a wise thing to do. And of course, before you just do it automatically, you would always check with your doctor because I don't know what other kind of medications sure. you are on or what other kinds of uh, underlying um, problems you might have. Because mm -hmm. If you have any issues with blood clotting, of course, you're going to talk to your doctor about that before you take right. a, a baby aspirin. But generally, it's a wise thing to do. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I wanted to bring up too, Joni, is um, uh, to Keisha's point, you know, um, she wasn't given the advice from the pharmacist, um, from the physician at urgent care, or from the nurse. And you mm -hmm. suggested last night, Joni, that, you know, they really mm -hmm. need to have some sort of a handout 
Um, if I don't know if the if the FDA needs to come up with it or you know in fact you know what Joni maybe we can get together and and this can be our baby and we'll put this out there to to the medical industry right Keisha the three of us mm-hmm. get together mm-hmm. come up with this chart with everything listed of of what the recommendations are for home self care and um, there can even be a category for those who are sent home on oxygen and um, when um, the, the nurse is going with them with their checkout um, information right going over their, um, their chart yeah, their and discharge their, instructions yeah their discharge instructions thank you um, mm-hmm. you know it'll be now this one doesn't pertain to you and you can cross that out or you can check the ones that do pertain to you and it's like for you it's going to be every two hours you're going to do this check and every three hours it'll be this so it'll it'll have the whole chart that's there and they can fill it out and customize it for each patient so we aren't having more quiches out there that are going home you know potentially to go home and die you know that's uh that would be uh a great idea and as you know with uh healthcare it mm-hmm. would take a lot to get that through. And all yeah. of the uh, discharge wow. instruction sheets go through multiple committees before they're accepted. Sure. But with COVID, I wonder if we couldn't do something faster. Yeah. Yeah. Do something. Because we, th- we're a year into this. We, we know more about COVID than when we, when it arrived here. Right. And I think we could put what we do know together. A lot of this is going to be anecdotal evidence based on people's reports. And that's why, they're not going to, that's why they don't usually print it and give it to somebody because of liability. They'll oh. be like, oh, well, you didn't tell me this one. Right. And then that, that's what gets us in trouble, which is why people and healthcare workers are not putting out the detail. Yeah. But I also think mm. a factor in that is that they're horribly overworked right now. Yes. If you're in an ER, if you're in an urgent care, you are so, so, um, overworked so tired right now i think Mm -hmm. they're probably giving out the minimum general suggestions rest tylenol yeah Yeah. it's um then you know maybe if they can just come up with the top three points one Mm -hmm. being don't go home and just crawl in bed uh, and sleep on your back i mean sleep on your back that that can save lives yes keisha and then there's one point i want to make and we sonia you and i talked about it last night it's just interesting how in the media they're saying, okay, um, 15,000 people died from COVID today, but you don't hear them in the media saying, okay, well, 20,000 people survived COVID today and here's how they did it. Yes. You know, they'll say 15,000 people died from COVID and uh, we need to be more preventive about our mask and, you know, the six foot social distancing. But I rarely hear, okay, this is how many people had it and they survived and here's what they did to survive. I don't Mm -hmm. hear that part. Mm -hmm. And to me, the only thing I can imagine is people like, you know, maybe somebody didn't have a Dr. Thomas in their ear like I did. Right. Joyce, Joyce Most doesn't people play. don't. No. Joyce doesn't play with me. Right. <laughs> she, she's Dr. Thomas to everybody else, but yes. Joyce, she doesn't play with me. Joyce will so break it she, down. <laughs> yeah, she she will break it down and let me know, you know, you need to do this. She actually told me to stop being hard at it mm-hmm. um, that night. And okay. she's like, go do this and go do that. Right. And I'm like, okay, all right. But, I mean, you don't hear, you don't, my thing was, what about the people that don't have the Dr. Thomas in their ear? Right. Um, giving them, you know, hey, when you get home, make sure you do this, 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 this. What What are they doing? Um, and my imagine, I let my imagination Take me there. Mm. They're probably going home. They're getting their prescription. They're going home. They're taking their prescription and they're lying in bed. bed. Yes. Uh On their bed. That's it. There's no, there's no addressing the other symptoms. They're, they're probably waiting for that prescription to, to to miraculously kick in. kick in and heal them without them having to get the PDLA, without them having to get the Tylenol, without them having to get the probiotics and and right. all the zinc and all that stuff. Yes. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're sitting there waiting yeah. for that prescription to kick in. And I could just see how they could the whole time they're waiting, their body's going down, down, 
down, Fast. down, and they're they're hearing all the deaths that are going on. Right. They're hearing all the you know people saying people are dying from it. So they go ahead. Somebody told me. Um, I have a friend who works in ER here in Dallas, and she said, "There's," she said, "Keisha," she said, "There's some people that are just giving up." Mm-hmm. they're just oh, yeah. oh. giving up like they're not mm. they're not there's they're not fighting they're just laying there and they're it's like they're they're waiting on death to come and take them they're mm. they're not fighting they're they no. they're just giving up because they got the diagnosis right because the, you know, COVID is something you're supposed to die from, I guess. Yeah. But um, no, we got to change that. That's oh, right. Yeah. And I thought, well, mm-hmm. if the doctors are not saying anything, the pharmacist is not saying anything. Right. And let's say you don't have a Dr. Thomas in your ear. What are you supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and I hope that everybody has an ounce of faith. You know, it yeah. takes a mustard seed, That's um, right. Minister Sonia, right? Yes, amen. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. just hoping that people have that small mustard seed of faith to push through and say, you know what? The devil is a liar. Come on. I'm about to come out of this thing. Come on. I'm about to go. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get yes. my intercessory prayer war. Yes. I'm going to get an agreement on come this. On. Yes. I need some prayer. Um, and we're going to get this thing handled up. Today. You know, so mm-hmm. I'm hoping that people have just that little amount of yeah. faith to come up out of that so they can start proactively taking care of themselves so they can recover. Yes. But it's just it makes me shudder to think the people there are there are those fifteen thousand people who died, they could have lived. Yes. And that's exactly what this show is about. And that's exactly what the Lord put on my heart, uh, Keisha, when I checked in on you to see how you were doing and saw everything that you were doing. I just felt such an urgency in my spirit to get this word out. Dr. Fauci, if you are out there, heads of hospitals, heads of, of ER, somebody get a hold of this and please know that this message needs to get out loud and clear because it will save lives. And I understand I have such compassion passion for those in the medical field who are just fatigued and just exhausted. I understand that these are trying times. This has been such a challenge. It's, 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 it's so painful. But to Keisha's point, to Joni's point, people are going home and they are dying unnecessarily. I think this, uh, made into a laminated card. Yes. Two sided laminated card, five by seven. Yes colorful handed out yeah quick instructions yeah i think it would be very helpful to everyone because they're exhausted they're not they're not creating these things at the hospitals it's almost like it would be a a sweet little donation to them to be able to go here's some here's some um basic instructions you might want to give to your patients um we had the time so we made it i know you don't have the time and if, if this is in agreement with how you feel people should take care of themselves, mm-hmm. then hand it to them. If yeah. there's something you don't agree with, block mm-hmm. it off. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or take a Sharpie and black it out, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Johnny, I think we're- it would be really cool. Yeah, I think it is a great idea. I know that you're quarantining right now in Cabo, but but you're here from the Twin Cities. I'm in the Twin Cities. We've got Mayo up the street. Um, let's, uh, the three of us, um, talk after the show here. We're going to close out in just a few minutes. Let's talk about um, bringing this into being, because I think that that would be a very, I know that it would be a very valuable tool. And let's see if we can't get it into the right hands who can then get it into the right hands and um, mm-hmm. just do just do our part in hopes of saving mm-hmm. lives so that people are not going home and going to bed lying on their backs and, and just dying unnecessarily. For too long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for too long. Well, mm. not only to the point of death, but they could get better faster. Yes. They could retain their energy faster, sure. which would then allow them to get up and do more walking yes, and more hydration yep. and more arms over their head, deep yep. breathing. That's right. And back into the swing of life. Yeah. 
Yep. Keisha, you have been um, such an inspiration. And I know that you're not feeling well. You know, I, I, I trust that you're on the back end of, of, uh, of your bout with COVID right now. Mm-hmm. And um, um, but I thank you, sis. I just had to call you and reach out to you. And you. yeah, I thank you. I've been praying for you. But I'm telling you, when you shared that information, I said, this needs to go out. And you are thank an you. inspiration. And I think that you have set a great example and a great model that many can follow thank you so much thank you mm-hmm. thank you yeah, yeah. i really keep appreciate getting you better keisha thank you i will i'm determined that yeah. covid ain't taking me nowhere no. okay no, the devil's a liar <laughs> <laughs> and Joni, um you know That's i know right. that you've got five thousand other things that you can be doing there in cabo and and you took the time to you know to come and and to bring your expertise to the table and we just are we grateful um for you taking your time and and sharing You're with very us welcome. And, and sharing with our viewers so um i thank you both for taking the time to be on the Solmanad show with sonia god bless both of you god bless dallas god bless cabo yeah. <laughs> god bless, god bless. Yep. yeah and you guys remember what we say here at Solmanad, like we have on the back of the t-shirts together we can and together, together we, will. we will together we will yeah yes. yeah yeah indeed yeah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So I hope that um, this has been an encouragement uh, for those of you who are at home watching. Um, I hope that you are have taken notes here. I wrote as many as I could here in the comments. Um, you can go back and you can review this show again. Take notes. Share this with your loved ones. Put it together. Mm-hmm. And I want you to stay tuned because the three of us are going to put our minds together and we're going to come up with um, uh, a, a Solmanad here a spreadsheet. Just that. Uh, laminated, you know, a little five by seven or I think something. I think is a great yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, let's see if we can't get this in the right hand. So Dr. Fauci, if you're out there, <laughs> we'll be coming <laughs> for you for support. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I think that uh, these uh, hospitals that we have decided to make a COVID hospital, like in yeah. St. Paul, it would be the Bethesda. Right. If we talk to some people there that have common experiences mm-hmm. and how they were able to help that patient, yeah. those are the insights that are so invaluable. Yeah. And I, I feel like Dr. Fauci has far too many meetings yeah, to get down to the nitty gritty, <laughs> but we're yeah. down here where the rubber hits the road. Yeah. And I right. really think that we need those uh, practical what do I do yeah. other than rest, go home and rest? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to wake up every two hours. I need to move. I need yeah. to drink fluids. I need to walk. I need to move the fluids that are cooling in my lungs. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what really counts. Send mm-hmm. them home um, with weapons of warfare, send them home equipped yeah. and <laughs> send them tooled. home. That's right. And send them mm-hmm. home with hope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You could yeah. almost make a COVID uh, a, a, a little kit. Mm-hmm. How to mm-hmm. fight COVID in a little yep. kit. Yep. Mm-hmm. You, you, there are, um, you know, they are, there is vitamin Z or vitamin uh, C and zinc and magnesium. Mm-hmm. And they're finding that there's some combinations of supplements that help COVID patients. Right. All of that kind of uh, anecdotal evidence. Mm-hmm. And we have to say anecdotal because it doesn't have a double blind study yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anecdotal evidence is what we could put together mm-hmm. and give people details so yeah. they mm-hmm. don't just go home and go to bed. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's do it. All three of us are women of action. Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah. don't be about it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agree. Yep. Good project. Yep. yep. Amen. All right, everybody. So there you go. Share this show. Take your notes. Stay tuned for the, uh, the valuable information that will be coming out here from uh, this COVID crew. <laughs> and COVID um, crew. I look forward to <laughs> seeing y'all uh, next week here every Wednesday. Uh, uh, watch the Somonad Show with Sonia every Wednesday at noon. And I've been uh, recording little mini shows in between. So I hope y'all have been enjoying um, those made of motivational minutes and those cooking segments and in Seattle, I'll be flying out on Friday. I'd love to do a distant drive-by and, and give y'all a virtual hug if I can. But uh, y'all stay blessed and whatever you put your hands to do. Until next time, again, Keisha, my sister, thank you so much. Joni, my sister, thank you so much. I love both of you. You're welcome. 
You powerful, Thank strong you. women. All right. We'll talk Thanks, after Sonia. We it was a great idea out. to go into the details, yeah. I think. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Definitely. You're welcome. Yeah. God bless you. All right. So we'll talk uh, with y'all next time. So thanks again for joining the show. For now, ciao.